Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church, member of the Evangelical Lutheran Synod on this last Sunday of the church year, also known as Christ the King Sunday. And our theme for today is, Here is the Bridegroom, how to meet him. And we begin with our first year. Infinite mercy, 
seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given thy only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of thee, and of thy will, and the true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to our lasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he giveth the power to become the sons of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. We join in the psalm of the day printed in your bulletin. It is Psalm 45, and we read that response. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the King. My is a you are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace, since God has blessed you forever. In your majesty ride forth victorious because of truth, humility, and righteousness. Let your right hand display blasphemies. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever.
Send forth, send forth your son, we pray, that he may lead home his bride, the church, that with all the saints may enter your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Self-control, 
putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us. So whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Here in the epistle, we join in the gratitude. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have a light.
saving word among us in its purity and by it keep us waiting, prepared to receive your Son when he comes again. Graciously forgive us our neglect, unbelief, and disobedience with respect to your word. Continue to pour down upon us the oil of gladness so that we might be prepared for our eternal life with your Son, in whose saving name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is written in the 25th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the first verse. We read as follows in Jesus' name. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here comes the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. O Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is true. Amen. Today is the last Sunday of the church year, Christ the King Sunday. Next Sunday, we begin a new church year in the calendar, the first Sunday in Advent, the season of preparation for Christmas and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church calendar then continues with stories about his childhood, his public ministry, death and resurrection, and his ascension. And finally, we get to the last three days or Sundays of the church calendar where we focus on the second coming of Christ in glory, in a final judgment, and the church triumphant. This is the culmination of the church year, and it is the only biblical prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. Christ is our King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, right now. But he is not with us in a visible form. On the final day, he will return in a visible form as King of Kings and sitting on his throne to judge the living and the dead of all nations. And for those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, it will be a day of alarm and fear because for them, it will be a day of judgment. Without Christ, no one can anticipate the final day with hope, but like a horror movie about the end of the world, many never think seriously about the end of their lives or the end of the world. For believers, however, it is a day of joy as we live for the day when the Lord will return in glory as the fulfillment of the promise of the Bible. So as our theme says today, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And we eagerly await that meeting. Dear fellow redeemed, our text today compares the last day to a wedding procession. So let me explain a wedding customs of the time of Jesus. On the wedding day, the groom, his friends and brothers, would hide in the house of the groom until about midnight. No one would know when they would appear. But suddenly they would emerge in a procession to the wedding place, in a sense like a triumphant procession of a king to his palace, and the wedding party would last for at least a week. And there would be much celebrating and rejoicing. In our text, the ten virgins are asked a very simple task. To tend their lamps until the coming of the bridegroom and illuminate his path. 
Now for us it doesn't make much sense because we have yard lights or street lights on all the lights, but imagine it being dark and the lights were to light the path as the bridegroom and his fellows accompanied him to the palace, so where the, where the wedding would be. Now, today we have somewhat of this similar idea as we often have a ring bearer and a flower girl which proceed the bride and groom or the, the groom bride coming up the altar and one carrying the ring and others maybe putting flowers on the ground. The virgins then were to wait for the groom. None of them knew the time that the bride would, would be coming. So five were wise and five were foolish. We read again verses 3 through 12. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. But the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps. And while the bridegroom carried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight was heard the cry, Behold, the bridegroom come, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise said, No. Go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered to them and said, Verily I say to you, I do not know you. When the foolish returned with oil in their lamps, it was too late. They lost their opportunity to enter the wedding feast. So what does this mean for us? We live in anticipation of the second coming of Christ. <coughs> he is the bridegroom. Also the king who is at the end of the world. He will lead a procession in triumph to the place of eternal life or heaven. To participate in this procession, then we must keep oil or keep our lamps lit in this world. In other words, we must live our lives and show our faith in God. In the epistle, then, in 1 Thessalonians, it says, Now, oh, brothers, about the time and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And while people are saying, Peace and safety, destruction will come to them suddenly, like labor pains on a pregnant woman. They will not escape. Also, we read from 2 Peter chapter 3. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a roar, and the elements will be dissolved, and the earth and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So walk in the light, not in darkness. That is, live lives as those who, not as those who have no hope. For God so loved us, we must show God's love to others acts of mercy to all of those around us. We are to be lamps in this dark world. Now our text here says that 50% of the 10 virgins were ready. Are only 50% of our members here at Emmanuel ready? Do only 50% of us here have oil that will keep burning in our lamps. So I ask you, what is oil? The oil is the grace of God poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, through the Word and the sacraments. If only 50% of our membership is ready, meaning half of us use the means of grace on a regular basis, it also means that half of us, our jars are filled with fuel, the source of power, 
which is faith in Jesus Christ. Now you might be tempted to say, well, the people who need to hear this are not here today. And this is true. Because constantly neglecting the word and the sacraments is foolish. And those people need to be called to repentance. For God tells us to hear his word, to study his word, to learn from his word. He helps us to, he invites us to the Lord's Supper to receive that blessings of the assurance of the forgiveness of our sins. If you and I then who may forget the bridegroom's will, we also can lose the quality of our life of faith and begin to live like those around us, to listen to the voice of the devil saying, God doesn't know all things, does he? God surely didn't mean that you couldn't touch the apple as he can to eat. As we begin to see the world's way of life, we think only of ourselves and not of others. <coughs> then, when Christ comes, we too will not be prepared to participate in the procession of the King because we have forgotten the main purpose of our lives or why we live here on earth. But today, brothers and sisters in Christ, you are among the wise. Your jars are being filled with the gospel of peace because today you are hearing that Jesus forgave your sins, that you are dressed in the robe of his righteousness, that your lamp is burning brightly. So we must live as children of God, grateful for his blessings as those who have faith in Christ. Now we live as children of God because we seek first God's kingdom <coughs> and trust that everything will be added to us. We should never fear judgment day. We should not be afraid of the lack of needs of this life because God is always with us. Christ is our king now and forever. Christ cares for you. Christ protects you from all evil. So we can live in joy and happiness. Now our hope and our joy and our happiness is just a reflection of what the kingdom of God would be like when Christ comes in his door. If we show our faith in God in our lives, others also will believe in Christ, even in this dark world. After the final judgment, God will create a new heaven and a new earth, and all who believe in Christ will live in this new creation forever. Those without faith, those who do not have trust in God, will lose this opportunity, just as the five foolish virgins. So we continue to seek the kingdom of God now and in the future, and we have that promise of God that is sure. And this hope gives us peace that passes all our understanding. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.
in heaven, bless this offering which we bring, prepared for your work, the kingdom to provide the gospel to others. May it be followed by our regular gifts, each generously and cheerfully given. Let the example of Christ's sacrifice on our behalf teach us the unselfish love and the humble service required in bringing salvation to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be had in reverence by all the children of men, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in thy purity, thy saving word, and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and to extend the kingdom of grace and to grant unto the holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all to hear rightly to understand and truly believe it. Send forth labors into the harvest and open the door of faith unto all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of the church and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth, especially do we entrust thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all our inhabitants. Cause thy glory to dwell among us, and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we commend to thy care all our schools, and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtue, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the father of his children, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, Help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day, before night cometh when no man can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by thy power and receive us into thy everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, in whose name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power.
such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
uh, confirmation students note there's no confirmation this Wednesday, but make sure that you study for your examination because we don't have another time to meet before we get that next Sunday. So next, uh, then also going back, today we have a council meeting, a youth group meeting, and then we'll have pizza and bowling afterwards for the youth group. Uh, next Sunday then is communion with confirmation examination. Uh, also note um, also about the Board of Regents. They call uh, someone who teach at the seminary. Some of you heard about that at the, um, at the Synod Convention. Uh, they have made their decision and called Dr. Timothy Schmeling, which is a son of the president of the seminary. Uh, also note in the back or in the narthex, you'll see the Jesus Cares Ministry Christmas card. Please take time to vote for one of the cards. There are prizes that they will give away to the people that are winning, so please take that opportunity. Also, there is a box to donate. If you have any Christmas gifts that you would like to donate for their Christmas party, please note that. And then also the meditations are here, so please pick one of those up as you need. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, 